I've already set up low dose and made a low mag map of my grid. I've gone in and zooming in using the plus key on my map and selected areas of interest. The way to do that is to say add point, click on a position of the map, then you can say stop adding. So now let's just go to one of these positions. Take a view image. And here we have a cytoskeleton. It's got a little bit of contamination on it. And what we'd like to do next is called rough eucentricity. So it's under the tasks file menu. We say eucentric rough and allow it to get us close to the appropriate eucentric height. Rough eucentricity has finished. So I take a view image. And then I want to check where my um, trial area is, and it's low. I'm interested in this area here, and so I would actually need to move my trial area now high. So I'm going to go ahead and move it, say none, center my area of interest so I don't accidentally uh, take a trial on top, take a trial image, I see that it's nowhere near centered. I might need to do some uh, changing of the beam. So now I say tasks center beam. After I've already selected, tick additional beam shift here. Just center the beam again. That looks pretty good. Don't need to adjust the beam anymore. So I'll turn off continuous update and additional beam shift. Auto focus so I get to the focus level I desire, which is about six microns under focus. Now I take a preview. Before I take the preview, I'm just going to double check what my preview dose is. So in the camera setup, go to preview and it's less than a tenth of an electron. I'm actually going to um, double that so that I can maybe see something. Okay, so now I take a preview image. Here we go. I'm going to save this. Let's see, I'll call it preview images.st. I'm going to save the stage position and I usually type the name of the file and the section number, which I can read here in the buffer status. So I know if I always want to see what this area looks like, I don't need to take another image. I can just go to my saved file. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of the other cytoskeletons, and then we'll see what our options are. I've gone through and looked at all the points that I laid down on the map, and now I need to figure out which one I want to use as my tilt series. So because my file is already open, I can just go to File Read, gives me this read from current file dialog box and I can just read each file as I want. So here's one image. I really like this one, number four. Also like number two and number zero. I think I'll go to number two. Say OK. So I look on my log and I see that this one is number two. I say go to XY, take a view image, here is my area of interest and now what I'm going to do is do both rough eucentricity and fine eucentricity and I'll just use the both. rough and fine eucentricity have finished. If I look at my log file, I see I have a lateral displacement that's fairly high. I like it to be between minus one and one, so this is a little too high. So I'm going to say tasks, set tilt axis offset, just allow it to be whatever Serialium calculates, reset the image shift, and then do fine eucentricity again. After redoing the fine eucentricity, I have a much a better number. It's not 
a lot better, but it's at least between 1 and minus 1 micron away. Okay, so now what we want to do is take a final view here. I just want to investigate what's above here to see which side would be my best tracking area. Okay, so the grid bar is up here, so we definitely need to make sure that we track below our area of interest. So let's just double check. We're high, so now I need to move it down about 1.3 microns, say none here. Then take a trial image. I need to move the beam, so I check additional beam shift, task center beam, take a new trial, move it again, there we go, turn off additional beam shift. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is take a view image and then move slightly off my area of interest to double check all of my low dose settings. So I'm just going to move over here. View looks fine. So first I'll check preview. I'll use my continuous update of mag and beam to make the beam small. Make sure that it's still centered. It's not centered. So tasks, center beam, new image, make it a little bit smaller. The aperture is not centered, so I'm going to shift that a little bit, a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Tasks, center beam, take a new preview. Okay, now I'm going to dial it all the way down to one electron. Now I need to check my view image, make sure it looks fine. That's totally reasonable. I might want to use the beam trackball to recenter it just a little bit and the additional beam shift. That looks good. Turn off additional beam shift, take a trial image. That's nowhere near centered. Additional beam shift, task, center beam, trial. I'm going to use continuous update to make the beam a little bit smaller. Center the beam again. And then now just bring out the beam just to the size of the CCD. Okay, turn this off, turn this off. Again, take a new preview just to make sure everything looks good because this is our final image and so we don't want anything to be messed up. So I'm checking it at high dose. Looks fine. Back to one electron. Now I need to refine the zero loss peak. So I just press refine zero loss peak in the filter control box. There's the edge of the slit. Okay. Now I can take a view image. And go back to my area of interest. Just going to tell myself. Okay. I'm more interested in this. Maybe get rid of all that contamination. Take another preview. Okay, so this is my what I would like for my final area to contain. So at this point on, I'm only going to use trial images. So I take a trial image. That's my tracking area. It's a great tracking area. Lots of structure. So now I'm ready to set up my tilt series. First, I'm going to go ahead. Oops and close the preview images stack. Set up, let's look at extra output. I want to make sure that I'm uh, making a small 
uh, bin down stack that I can look at in a separate window and I don't care about saving any of my views or focuses or anything like this and so we say OK set up and we go for these data every two degrees I like a fairly large delay after tilting uh, I like to refine the zero loss peak I would say every 20 minutes in this case and instead of what we use for plastic we're going to use very intensity as 1 over the cosine and I need for these samples because they're so thick 1 over 1 what that means is my dose will be 1 electron at 0 degrees 2 electrons at 60 degrees with a total dose of 78 electrons per angstrom squared so my defocus target is minus 6 I do not need to refine eucentricity do not need, need to leave a mid tilt anchor um, and I like to focus before and after. I never repeat my record because that's just more dose on my sample. But I do like to have the auto sh align shift ticked because I like it. If it moves more than 30%, it stops and asks me if there's a problem. Um, everything else looks good, so I'm going to say go. Okay. This is cryo series 1.st. And I always say end loop so I can see what the first image looks like. So now we're going to walk up to 60 degrees using the tracking area or trials. So we're not going to be on our preview record area at all. Okay. So now we're walking up. Now it's going to focus. Correct for the tilt backlash in the compu stage. Take our first record. Okay, there's our first record. It actually doesn't look so bad. You can see a gold particle here. There's no drift. If we were curious about drift, we could say process FFT. We can see nicely there's no drift, and you can even see that there is some sort of repetitive structure here in the image. We, since we like what we see we can say resume. Here it tells us what it wants to do next and then a myriad of options that you can then use instead but we're just going to use what's next. We say go and now it will move to the second tilt. The tilt series is just finished so I'm going to say tilt series terminate. Yes I want to close the file no, I do not want to leave rotated copies for dual axis. I always immediately tilt to zero. Then I'm going to close my log file and save it and then open a new file.